Okay, this lesson is on simple and compound sentences and is our first lesson really looking at clauses. So a clause is a group of words with its own subject and verb. Um, an independent clause has a subject and a verb. It can stand by itself as a complete sentence. So every complete sentence is a clause. The bus arrived. Subject, verb, right? Bus is a subject, arrived is your verb. Marie Curie, a scientist, discovered radium. Here we have Marie Curie um, as our subject. Discovered is the verb. Radium is the direct object. And a scientist is an appositive, okay? Not every clause, though, is a complete sentence. We do have clauses specifically that are not complete sentences uh, and paired with an independent clause um, to make a complete sentence. We're going to start off by looking at cl independent clauses. So a simple sentence consists of a single independent clause. For example, Rachel Carson wrote Silent Spring. Okay, so this is a subject, has a verb, in this case it also has a direct object, um, and it is a complete thought. It can stand independently on its own as a complete thought. A simple sentence may have a compound subject, a compound predicate, or both. It's still a simple sentence. So, for example, Alexis and Zeely read and study books. Okay, so we have a compound subject, Alexis and Zeely, meaning we have two subjects, and a compound predicate, meaning we have two verbs, read and study. That's all that means. Okay, it's still one sentence, and it's a simple sentence. A simple sentence may have the predicate first. So it could be up the stairs, ran the cat, right? Especially if you're writing poetry or something. So uh, ran is our verb, cat is the subject, and so we have the predicate part of the sentence first here, and then the subject part. In all cases, um, the subjects and verbs will be grouped together, so I could divide my sentences in half, right? So, Rachel Carlson wrote, Alexis and Zeely read, up the stairs ran. I can divide my sentence in one place in half. The sentence structures above could be labeled like this, S-V-D-O for number one, that's Rachel Carson wrote Silent Spring, S-S-V-V-D-O, right, for Alexis and Zeely read and study books, books being the direct object, and then V-S for up the stairs ran the cat, okay, so you can see in each case here, okay, uh, we have all of our S's and all of our V's together, right, S's on one side, V's on the other. A compound sentence is different. So a compound sentence contains two or more simple sentences or independent clauses. So it's at least two independent clauses. It could even have more on occasion. There are two ways to join the two simple sentences together. First, you can add a comma and a coordinating conjunction. Coordinating conjunctions are and, but, or, for, so, and yet, okay? Um, so you can't just use a comma, and you can't just use a coordinating conjunction. You have to use both. Or you can use a semicolon. We typically only use a semicolon if the two ideas are extremely closely related. So some examples, ecologists study forests, and forest rangers protect them. In this sentence, ecologist is your first subject. Study is the verb, so this first independent clause, ecologists study forests. That could stand on its own. The second one, forest rangers protect them. Rangers is the simple subject, protect is the verb, and again, it could stand on its own, but we're combining them with the comma and the conjunction and. We could also combine them with a semicolon, in which case we don't use the conjunction, just the semicolon. But it's a semicolon, or a comma in the conjunction. It's never just a comma. The sentence structure of the compound sentence will always have at least two subjects and two verbs, but they alternate in the sentence. So instead of it being SSVV, 
is going to be SV, SV. So Mary saw the light, there's a direct object, and she followed it. So we have two subjects, but they are alternating with the verb. So we have subject verb, subject verb. Another example, Kathleen and Jane folded the letters and Tony sealed the envelopes and added stamps. So in this one, we have two subjects and a verb for our first independent clause, Kathleen and Jane folded the letters. And we have our comma and our conjunction. We have a second independent clause. Tony sealed the envelopes and added stamps. Both of these could stand on their own. Just like Mary saw the light, she followed it. Those could be complete sentences in their, on their own. Um, so when you combine them, it's what we call a compound sentence because we have two simple sentences or two independent clauses being combined with the comma and the conjunction. And you'll notice we've got SSV, SV. So again, instead of all the S's being on one side and all the V's on the other, they're alternating here. SSV, SV, and then V with direct objects sprinkled in as well. Okay. So run-on sentences are a huge issue in writing. A run-on sentence is when you have two or more simple sentences like what we just saw, but they're incorrectly written as one sentence. So they're not combined, put together correctly. So you can correct a run-on two ways. You can write them as separate sentences, or you can combine them in a correctly punctuated compound sentence. Okay, so for example, ecologists study nature, forest rangers protect it. This is a run-on, okay? There is nothing here uh, suggesting we have two clauses, but we do. And so one way to correct that would be to put a period at the end of the first clause, ecologists study nature, and then a new sentence starts with the second clause, forest rangers protect it. Um, Another way we can see run-ons is when you combine them with the comma only. This I'm seeing this is very common. Ecologists study nature, forest rangers protect it. This is not correct. This is a run-on sentence. Okay, you're missing the conjunction. So this is correcting it the first way. We've added the comma and, we've added and in there. Could be but, it could be or, depends on, on how they're related to each other. Um, the second way would be to change the comma to a semicolon. So any of these three ways, turning it into a period, um, adding the conjunction and, or changing the comma to a semicolon, all of these work for when you have a run on because you've used commas to connect your independent clauses um, and uh, instead of uh, correctly punctuating it. Fragments are another problem, so uh, we'll look at this again with complex sentences, but a fragment is a group of words that lacks a subject, a predicate, or both. Okay, so it could have a subject and a predicate, but it may not be a complete thought, so it needs to express a complete thought. So for any of these reasons, it would then be a fragment. So we use fragments a lot when we speak, so when we answer somebody's question, you um, might be creating a fragment. Um, such as because <laughs> or if, right, or something like that. Um, when we go to the store, if I run out of milk, right? Well, if I run out of milk is a fragment. It's not a complete thought. It's in response to somebody else. And so we understand what I meant with it, but it's not the way you want to write, okay? So anything you write for school or business should have complete sentences. So correcting sentence fragments so just a few examples, lush forests, that is not a sentence. It's missing a predicate. What do the lush forests do? Lush forests provide scenic land for recreation. So this feels almost like a title of something as opposed to it's not a sentence, right? There's no verb. Um, inhabits the woodlands. Okay, so this is a fragment because it's missing a subject. We have our verb inhabits, but we don't know who or what is inhabiting the woodlands. Wildlife inhabits the woodlands. Um, and then sometimes we get pro propositional phrases like for animals. That is also a fragment. It's missing both the subject and predicate. Forest provides shelter for animals. So you just create the complete sentence out of it.
Okay, so we will get be looking uh, more at fragments, as I said, when we get into complex sentences. And um, but for now, um, you know, run-ons is uh, a particularly big issue uh, in our writing. So understanding how um, to correct run-ons, either making a correctly punctuated, put together compound sentence or creating two simple sentences um, is how you fix that.